the civil rights movement created a lot of progress. And yet the stubborn, what they perceive as, as inequality, right, the, the statistics of success, which show that, you know, as an aggregate population, black people don't have the same kind of wealth as, as yeah. other racial groups, right? These are some of the objective markers that they're pointing to, which they claim uh, are being caused by systemic racism. Um, and uh, I, I disagree with that narrative. But part of the way we can be sympathetic to it and understand it from a cultural dimension, as Orlando Patterson attempts to do, is to recognize that there, there, we talk about these worldviews, right? Traditional, modern, and progressive. There's a worldview, a stubbornly persistent remnant of a cultural worldview that, that exists in the timeline of history before traditionalism. We might call it pre-traditional, right? Orlando uh, Patterson calls it the street configuration. Right? And it's certainly, you know, they've been very careful to say in inner city neighborhoods and distressed neighborhoods, the majority of the people who live there don't, are, are not embedded in this street configuration, this pre-traditional worldview. But the, the fact that, that it persists there, as seen in gang culture and prison culture and, and you know, sort of the, the gangster mentality that is behind much of the, the shootings and, and you know, the, the turmoil that exists in these, in these places, that that does radiate out. It, it is partially responsible for the, persistent, the persistence of the inequality and, and the, um, uh, the, the large percentages of, of black people who were in prison. This worldview, we might call it pre-traditional, I think there's a dignity there. I mean, I think certainly it's, it's, it's antisocial. We can't just sort of, it, it, it's not compatible with a law-abiding civilization. So we have to be able to be biased against this form of culture, but it's not specific just to black people. This pre-traditional warrior culture, I think if we want to talk about it in, with a certain amount of dignity, we can say, we call it warrior consciousness and culture. It's, it's developmental psychology uh, recognizes it as egocentric consciousness or pre-conventional consciousness. And you can see it in white people in the skinheads, right? You can see it in Latin, you know, Hispanic people in MS-13, right? You can see that even Asian people have, you know, the Hmong street gangs, right? So this, this form of culture, this warrior culture uh, is, is stubborn 